Welcome back to Final Fantasy X HD, and I'm going to immediately move my microphone because I'm an ill-prepared fool. There we go. That should be a little bit better. Um, I'm on this screen primarily to tell you you can more or less ignore the game time because I have not been playing for two and a half hours. Doesn't take that long to get here. I keep hitting the wrong button. It's a drinking game, by the way. Started in Final Fantasy XII, and now I'm used to that control setup, and now I'm going to hit the wrong button for every other control setup. But whatever. Let us continue. Step one, go through door. Step two, be confused by loading screen. There isn't a loading screen. Fantastic. In this majestic room, we'll find Flint, and I don't believe anything else. But I'm fairly certain. Yeah, there's nothing else in here. There are a couple treasure chests here. I think there's actually only a couple, but they do exist, and they're on the other side where we will find our withered bouquet. Which, obviously, you need something dry and flint, or something to create a spark. By the way, hidden chest. You won't see that unless you push your character into the corner here. You can see you basically have to go all the way into the corner for that to pop up. But uh, you need something dry and something to create a spark to make a fire. So, these are the two items that the game has given you. And we will grab the other chest from this area before we head back down. We won't be here very long, and you can't come back. So, if you miss these... I hate the camera in this place. If you miss these, you can't get them again, but they're not... You know, it's a high potion and ether. You'll survive. In fact, I believe... I'm pretty sure you can buy both of those, so... It's usually only elixirs or high elixirs if they exi exist in the game that you're generally not going to be able to purchase, so... Things like X potions and high potions and high ethers, if those exist, are usually purchasable, but once you've got all your stuff, just come back here and you will get a series, or maybe one, I don't know, of uh, cutscenes here. need food what do, what do you, you want? want it was a bad call your team lost because of you you came to say that it's been 10 years <sighs> I thought you'd be crying. Who? Me? You cried. Welcome, click. Give me a break! Technically a boss fight. Although, well, yeah, I guess it is basically a boss fight. Um, important thing in this fight. Trade blows. Second important thing, pay attention to the little dealio dongle over here. Maybe, I don't remember what this is called. Pay attention to that on the right. Whenever you have two in a row, use a potion if you need to. 
We don't need to because we're at full health because he missed, which can happen, so we're just going to take double attacks here to speed this process up. He can kill you. He is the first, well, first boss, anyway, that can kill you, so do bear that in mind. And use our first potion. You are going to use probably a few potions in this fight, so don't worry too much about using them. You can get more later if you need it. But you can't if you're dead. Once you get them to about, I think, half health, you trigger this event. Which is a door exploding in a very silly fashion. And it's a tutorial. Uh, she has a use command, which is one of her specials. The other one is steel, I believe. But uh, via the use command, yeah, it is steel, we can use grenades, which interestingly you can steal from this guy. Guess what we're going to do? It's not a, uh, oh right, Titus can't steal yet. We will allow him to steal eventually. Uh, we may not even need to, to be honest. I would like to, anyway. You might notice, if you've played the original, her outfit is no longer quite as skin-colored as it used to be. Used to be quite a bit more colored like skin. I'm gonna go ahead and use this grenade. There's not too much reason to save it, but uh, you can do this fight without using all three of the grenades. But we can just steal more grenades later. You can only steal, as far as I'm aware, one grenade from him. And there's your first fight with A, the victory theme, and B, AP. You get more if you can overkill him, but it's highly unlikely you'll be able to overkill him at this point. Even with a grenade, which puts you pretty close at overkill. It's 400 for an overkill. Kuno is sorry, by the way. That looked like a bug. He actually moved his... He didn't... He wasn't holding his weapon, for whatever reason. He's supposed to have a weapon in that scene. You can tell... Well, you can still tell, because he moves his arms as if to hold it. But, uh, he didn't have a weapon, so that's a little bit weird. I don't know how they managed to miss that in quality assurance. Hey, that hurts. Musujek, rain. Whoa. Okay. Hey, nurse.
I said I don't understand. Akodama! Fed! He said you can stay if you make yourself useful. You... you understand me? All right, I'll work. Huzzah! Step one, go over here. Albed Primer Volume 1. We've achieved the rank of Albed Dude Who Knows Nothing. Effectively there. I've earned a trophy. Hooray! Trophies! Fantastic news. I don't believe... Ah, yes, he does do it. He's probably still not glitched, and I'm not going to bother trying, but in the original you could talk to him, save, reload, and then talk to him again, and he would give you more potions, and you could just repeat that ad infinitum. Um, I doubt that's still in, and I'm not even going to bother, because it's just potions, and quite frankly, they're potions. You will survive without having 99 potions at the start of the game, trust me. Be surprised if you even used half of those through the game. Oh, almost forgot. Also, insert tedious tutorial that cannot be skipped. It's also based on the standard grid. It will not show you the expert uh, grid in this tutorial. I'm gonna skip through this as quickly as I physically can. It's a sphere grid, it's not terribly complicated. You move this, it uses sphere levels for every node you pass by. Certain nodes require certain spheres, for instance, um, the... I'll just do it this way. Ability spheres require ability, um, accuracy, agility requires speed, stuff like HP and strength requires strength spheres, etc, etc. You get the general gist of it. It's not a complicated system. MP and magic need mana, and... There's Lux Spheres, and you can also get Spheres to place and empty nodes, which are those black tiny ones there. If you're going to be doing uh, Dark Aeons and Penance, I believe is what his name is, you will likely... Actually, I shouldn't say likely. You will need to destroy nodes and replace nodes as you uh, grind levels and stuff at the end game, Because you'll want to at least have a lot of luck. So, in order to get that luck, you're going to have to place down nodes, possibly destroy some others to maximize space and stuff like that, but, um... I probably won't be min-maxing to the level of destroying nodes, we'll see how it goes, but I will be placing nodes and stuff later on in the game, but either way. We found some ancient ruins right beneath us. It's not active now, but there should still be some power left. We're going to go down there and activate it. And then we should be able to salvage the big prize! Mm-hmm. Okay, let's get to work. Roger. Huzzah. Now, interestingly, you can get in uh, random encounters if you, for whatever reason, feel like grinding. For whatever reason, I went back up there, but... Well, this is cool. You really couldn't see very well in the original game down here. Everything was, like, super dark, but you can actually see the boat and stuff now. It's kind of irrelevant, but... Uh, you can get random encounters down here if you want to. You can farm up on the, uh, piranhas that you fight. They also, interestingly, drop ability spheres, and they're one of the few enemies in the, uh, early game that drop ability spheres. And you fight them at the very beginning, which is bizarre, to say the least, but... You know. You don't need to, there's, quite frankly, very little reason to. Our friend there, who I don't believe has told us her name quite yet, no she hasn't, also drops speed spheres apparently. Uh, she does basically no damage, her primary use here, we gotta go in this little hole over here, her primary use is stealing and then using the items, because you can steal grenades from basically freaking everything in this place. Which is useful, because we're going to use a lot of grenades, as you might expect. Also, save point. I won't be using it. I shouldn't need it. I think it's the only sphere grid, or save point, sorry. Not sphere grid, in the game that doesn't have a base, but I could be mistaken. There could be a few others that I'm forgetting about somewhere. So basically, just run up to the console, mash the, eight, the uh, X button, 
you should bash it until it works and just head down here it's a very simple area there's not anything going on you'll have to fight some piranhas and other bollocks no one cares about um i don't actually know if you could steal grenades from these i should probably try I probably should have been trying this whole time, because having a few grenades with her would be pretty useful. Yep, you can steal grenades from them. Sadly, you won't kill it, though, if you do that, so we'll take additional damage for basically no reason. That's good to know. So they probably have about 200 hit points or something like that. Maybe they changed it from ability to speed sphere, because that would make a lot more sense than having this thing's drop ability spheres. By the way, when the camera changes, if you move your control stick, it changes the direction you're going. It's kind of annoying. And we're going to employ the tightest strategy of making advanced technology work, called punching it. This awakens Tross, who camps the doorway out of this area. He's very rude, this Tross fellow. Somehow we don't see it on our way over here, but whatever. Not a very difficult fight, but he can kill you. Gotta be a little bit careful of that. First thing, steal, because he has a grenade. In fact, apparently he has three. That's good to know. He will do that fairly often. You know what, I probably, uh, well, I don't need to do it yet, but uh, we'll use grenades, yeah. When he hits a certain health th threshold, he has 2200, by the way. 600 for an overkill, good luck getting that again. When he hits a certain threat health threshold, he'll go over there. There's nothing you can do the first time he does this. But you can do this, which will heal you. So, it's basically a, hey, I did damage to you, time to heal kind of thing. When it's his turn again, he'll do this. It's like a truck. You're probably gonna have to use potions for this. I'm actually going to go ahead and use one on... Not him, her. So she, just so she doesn't die. Uh, when he does it the second time, you can then use another uh, special trigger. Called Pincer Attack, if I recall correctly. Wow, 700. Oh, because he's facing backwards. That's right. You know, actually... Um, there's nothing I can really do that would make give her another turn quickly. We may end up just killing him because he's facing the wrong way here. Oh, nope. Oh, maybe that was a crit. I don't know why it did so much damage there. Thought it was employing the you're behind him doing more damage approach to tactics here. Notice how much MP she has, by the way. Which is bizarre, considering she can't do anything with that MP, but whatever. Stand by with her, and with Titus, you have Pincer Attack, so we can go ahead and do that. That'll put one person on each side, it keeps them from doing Nautilus Charge. You don't need to do this to kill him. It just saves you a little bit of time, and it saves you a little bit of damage from taking a Nautilus Charge to the face again. We're gonna go ahead and use the last grenade, which may or may not kill him. Probably not. Not quite. But if you got lucky with a uh, grenade toss, you could actually overkill him. It takes 600. We hit 730, I think, with that grenade. Which would get you four more AP. whoop de doo To make that a little bit easier, you can actually use the sphere grid before you come in here and learn cheer with Titus. Which increases attack and defense, I believe. At the very least defense. Probably both. But either way, you can do that before you come in here to make it a little bit easier on yourself. Not much reason to. And we're done with this area. We got a little bit of a cutscene, but that's it for this area. All of the first areas you go to are very quick. You don't spend a lot of time in any of them.
I like that you can actually see through this water now. You can actually see what you're swimming towards. That's pretty cool now. It was literally just a murky mess before in the original version. You couldn't see more than, I don't know, not very far, so... You could barely make out that you are even swimming towards something that wasn't rock in the original version, so I actually like that you can see in the water now. As potentially unrealistic as that might be, at least you can see now. Hey! Hey, I helped out, didn't I? That looks even worse now that you can tell what it is, good god. so earlier. I didn't get a chance to. Everyone thought we were a fiend. Uh, we? Oh, we means you. Um... Who are you guys, anyway? We're Albed. Can't you tell? Wait, you're not an Albed hater, are you? I don't even know what an Albed is. Where are you from? Xanarkand. I'm a Blitzball player. <clears throat> Star player of the Xanarkand Abes. Did you... hit your head or something? Um, you guys hit me? Oh, right. Do you remember anything before that? So I told her everything there was to tell about Xanarkin. About life there, Blitzball, and Sin's attack. And about how Aaron and I were engulfed in this light. I just said things as they came to mind. But then I started to wonder. Did I say something funny? You were near Sin. Mm-hmm. Don't worry. You'll be better in no time. They say your head gets funny when Sin is near. Maybe you just had some kind of dream?
You mean I'm sick? Because of Sin's toxin, yeah. You sure? Yeah, there is no Xanarkand anymore. Sin destroyed it a thousand years ago. So, no one plays Blitzball there. Huh? Wha wh what do you mean, a thousand years ago? But I saw Sin attack Xanarkin. You're saying that happened a thousand years ago? No way! Time to take the chance to save! Primarily because I don't want to watch cutscenes again, and you can't skip cutscenes in this game. They did not add that functionality for whatever reason. You can skip them in 12 and 13. At 11 and 14. I think you can skip it in 11. Can't skip it in 10, though. So, it's really quite annoying considering some of them are right before bosses. You said. You play Blitzball? Uh huh. You know, you should go to Luca. Someone might know who you are, or you might find someone you recognize. Luca? Ah. Uh. Huh. Okay, leave it to me. I'll get you to Luca. Promise. <laughs> You'd rather stay here? Uh uh. Okay, I'll go tell the others. Wait here. Oh. And one thing, don't tell anyone you're from Xanarkand, okay? Yevon says it's a holy place. You might upset someone. Oh, uh-huh. <laughs> My Xanarkand? Some kind of holy place? Yeah, right, I thought. Since when? Yevon? Sin? Luca? I thought Sin just took me to a faraway place, that I could go back in a day or two. But a thousand years into the future? No way! I've noticed a flaw in their system. You can see through the water now, but they haven't actually put Sin down there. Oh, and of course it gives me a freaking save point right after I use the save point right there, because logic would dictate I do things like that. I'm sorry I don't remember where all the story saves are. Blah blah blah. And stuff.
Those lips, man. First thing you do is not go over there. Well, you don't have to do this now, but it saves you from taking a trip back. If you head to the right, there's a chest over here. Inside this chest is a very useful thing. It's the moon crest. The original game, I believe it's actually called, what is it, the sun crest? No, it is the moon crest. I just had it written down wrong, never mind. I have little notes on the side, by the way, if you're curious. Uh, there's also another chest that I'm going to attempt to get now, just so I don't have to remember later, because I probably will forget. There is another chest, or should be, way over here. There we go. I think this is the only one on this side, but it has a couple antidotes, which we might use later. Yeah, I think that's it for now. Could be mistaken, but, you know... If it's anything important, we'll come back later and grab it. But for now, let's go ahead and meet with our friend Waka, who I don't actually think has told us his name, but it's Waka. Or Waka. Pac-Man Man. Yo. Hiya. You wanna... Try that move. One more time. Finally. Things were starting to look up. Forget that. Uh, I got too uh, close to sin, and my head's all foggy like. So uh, I don't know where this place is, or even where I came from. Sin's toxin got to you, but you're still alive. Praise be to Yevon. All right, back to practice. I'm Waka. Coach and captain of the Besaid Orox, brother. <laughs> what? You hungry? Okay, back to the village. I'll get you something. Indeed, if I believe, if I'm rec remembering correctly, if you um, talk to all of the, or some of them, I don't know if it's all of them, but if you talk to the team members enough times, you can read through this if you want to pause the video and read through it, but they'll give you items and stuff, so we're going to go ahead and exhaust their dialogue relatively quickly. Potion! Also, if you can't tell from this... An underwater race! If you can't tell from this, these aren't the best Blitzball players in the world. Sleep underwater. That's uh, quite the skill here. So you gave me a high potion, are you going to give me anything? You can hold your own underwater, you're not so good, yeah, okay, so he's not going to give me anything then. I felt like I could trust this Waka, so I just had to ask. Um, uh, it's true Xanarkin was destroyed, right? A thousand years ago? So it's just a big pile of rubble now, isn't it? The way he says Long that, great. Ago, there were a whole lot of cities in Spira. Big cities with machina, machines to run them. People played all day and let the machina do the work. And then, well, take a look. Sin came and destroyed the machina cities. And Xanarkand along with them. Yeah, that was about a thousand years ago. Just like you said. If you ask me, sin's our punishment for letting things get out of hand. What gets me, though, is we gotta suffer because of what some goofballs did way back when. Of course, we must always repent for our sins. That's important. It's just that it's hard to keep at it sometimes, you know? It was just as Riku said. Waka and Riku couldn't both be lying. Why would they? <laughs> but you from the Xanarkand Daves, that was a good one, huh? Hey, I'm not saying the team never existed, yeah? <laughs> but you gotta figure, a team living in luxury like that be pretty soft, eh? I appreciated the fact that Waka was trying to cheer me up. 
But at that time, all I could think about was everything that happened to me. All this started with Sin. Maybe if I could find Sin one more time, I could go home. For now, I'd just live life until that time came. No more worrying about where or when I was. Sure, it was hard not to think of home, but I started to feel better already. A little better, maybe. I'm gonna be super unprofessional and push this button to check my battery. All right, battery's good. Onward! <laughs> I had it, I had it uh, plugged in for the first bit, which I should have mentioned this ages ago. I also need to go back to save point. Um, the first set was dark, this set should be brighter. Um, you can still watch the first one, it's just going to be a bit dark, but this one should be a little bit better. And on that note, thanks for watching part two. In the next part, we're going to attempt to clear at least half, maybe not half, that's kind of lopsided in one direction, but we'll clear at least some of the Isle of Besaid, which is currently where we are. So until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.